Uh, good afternoon. We'll call to order the City of Murfreesboro Board of Zoning Appeals uh, regular meeting for September 27th. Um, first item on our agenda is a consideration of the minutes from our last meeting, uh, August 23rd, 2017. Those minutes were provided. Were there any changes that need to be made to those? If not, those will stand as approved. And we will ne move to, next move to sign variances. Um, our first application is S17046 by Bobby Kirby, uh, representing Clarissa oh Smith, uh, requesting a sign variance of 16 inches uh, from the city sign ordinance, which requires a complex freestanding sign to be no higher than 16 feet. Uh, the property is in the Highway Commercial Zoning District located at 1141 Fortress Boulevard. Ms. Kerr, if you'd review that for us. Good afternoon, Chairman, members of the board. The applicant, Mr. Bobby Kerr, per Kirby, representing Clarissa Smith, who's the owner of the Fortress Retail, is requesting a variance from section 25.2-6C525, the height of the City of Murfreesboro sign ordinance, which allows a complex sign to be no higher than 16 feet on property located 1141 Fortress Boulevard, which is in the Gateway District Overlay Zone. The applicant is requesting a variance to have a push-through style, internally illuminated, freestanding wall sign with 91 square foot of display area and a height of 17 feet 6 inches within a partial um, that has a substantial drainage ditch. The specific location of the sign on the property was determined uh, by the location of utility lines and sewer and drainage easements requiring a revocable license agreement with the Water and Sewer Department. During construction, the sign was built one foot six inches taller than permitted at the base on the elevation of the sign with the adjoining roadway. According to section 25.26A6, the board has the authority to grant a variance based on the conditions of such parcels of real estate and the application does not violate any of the limitations set forth in code 25.2-29D or E, which this request does not. All other setbacks and regulations will apply. And I'm available to answer any questions you may have as well as Mr. Bobby Kirby is here. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Uh, didn't we have something similar to this on Memorial a while back that was below the road grade there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other questions? Thank you. Um, anything the applicant would like to add? Okay. Okay, thank you. At this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Uh, anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you'd come forward and give us your name and address uh, and provide us with any comments you might have. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussion or a motion. Mr. Chairman, I apologize for my tardiness. Uh, are, which are we dealing with uh, Bobby Kirby? Uh, 1746, okay, thank you. If there's no further discussion, I move to approve the application. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Or none. That application has been approved. Uh, next, we'll move to application S17047 by Cynthia Ford, representing Murfreesboro City Schools, uh, Blackman Elementary School. They're requesting a sign variance uh, from the Murfreesboro Sign Ordinance, which allows signs within a residential zone to be non-illuminated or indirectly illuminated. Uh, this is to allow an internal illuminated freestanding sign. Uh, the property is in an RS-15 zone and located at 586 Fortress Boulevard. If you'd review this one for us. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Cynthia Ford, the principal representing Blackman Elementary School, is requesting a sign variance to be allowed to install a 40 square foot internally illuminated sign face within an existing freestanding wall sign with a manual changeable copy reader board. It has an eight foot overall height and the property is located at 586 Fortress Boulevard and is within an RS-15 zone. Uh, the sign ordinance does not allow 
for internally illuminated signs. It only allows for externally illuminated or non-illuminated currently. Uh, the current sign location on the property on Fortress Boulevard is across the street from the Rutherford County EMS facilities and the Blackman Middle School. Both of these properties are also within an RS-15 zone. The Pro proposed sign is also approximately 100 and, uh, 570 feet from any current residential houses. All other setbacks and regulations would apply, and if the, the board wishes, you may, as a condition of approval on this, request a timer be placed on the sign and impose time restrictions on illumination. Ms. Cynthia Ford is here to answer any questions, as well as myself. Amelia, it, are the other school signs internally illuminated that are along that area? Currently now, no. Okay. They have one existing on Fortress. At the, this time, they're gonna put one on Blaze as well. And then they would like to replace the one on Fortress with one that is internally illuminated. Okay. However, the one on Blaze will not be internally illuminated due to its proximity uh, to the neighborhoods. Is this similar to the Siegel Elementary or yes, Siegel sir. Middle ones we've done? I uh, didn't appear at 500 feet from a residence. I don't think, it seems comparable to distance of the ones we did for Siegel, yes. right? But it's the housing. I mean, the RS zone, RS 15 zone. They could build houses, but that property is already owned by by um, Rutherford County. Right. And then I, I don't foresee any any housing that could be built as at least 570 feet away. Okay. Any other questions? Um, anything the applicant would like to add? Anything additional? I'll answer any questions you have. To. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for? All right, at this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. Um, is there anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application? If you'd come forward. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussion or motion. We didn't deal with timers on Siegel, did we? I, have, I, don't, I don't remember conditioning those. You mentioned those. We did those. not do... Um a condition of timers on Siegel. We did do a condition of a timer on the um, River Oaks Community Church that the sign was going to be in a closer proximity to a resident um, at the back of their yard, so they did put a timer on theirs to turn it off at, I, I can't remember if it was 9 or 10 o'clock at night. Do the streetlights um, that are on Fortress, do they, they don't turn off at all at night, though, do they? I don't, I don't believe so. And the, the decorative lights, I don't think do either. They're not supposed to. Right. Okay. Well, I wouldn't think so, but there, yeah. I mean, that would, sign would be right next to those street lamps that I would assume the, the lumens, I guess, is the appropriate right. word. Would wouldn't not be any be greater. Any greater than that. Okay. Any further questions or have a motion? Mr. Chairman, I would move for approval as requested. I'll second. And that's with no timers, right? With no timers. I mean, I think what was stated question, but y'all said that the uh, Siegel property had not required it and the location way, uh, as Curtis explained it is, should be acceptable. I agree with that. I do too. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. That application has been approved. Uh, next, we'll move to variance requests. Uh, our first one is application Z17048 by Roger Hopkins. Uh, is requesting four variances from the city of Murfreesboro zoning ordinance in order to construct two additions on a residence. Uh, like as I said, we have four portions to this application. The first is a variance of three feet from the required side feet, five feet side setback for a second story addition. Then a seven foot variance from the 10 foot front setback for a second story addition. And then a variance of three feet from the required five foot side setback for a sun porch. And then a six foot variance from the required 10 foot variance front setback for the sun porch. Uh, Ms. Rush, if you'd review that for us. Thank you. Uh, the applicant, Mr. Hopkins, as you stated, is seeking four variances from Appendix A, Chart 2 of the City of Murfreesboro Zoning Ordinance 
This will allow the construction of two additions to an existing residence located at 702 East Vine Street. The property square footage is uh, 2,250 2, square feet and measures 25 feet width by 90 feet length and may be one of the smallest lots in the city of Murfreesboro, I do believe. Uh, the existing residence is 800 square feet in size and was originally constructed in 1927 as a neighborhood market. So this was a small neighborhood grocery store. Um, and I don't know how many, probably a few decades ago, several decades ago, was converted to be used as a residence. Um, the total area for the second story addition is 366 square feet. And this would allow for a bedroom addition uh, with a full bath and a very small study area. It's basically a, a desk and, and chair area um, table at the top of the stairwell. Uh, the second story addition would be constructed in alignment with the existing structure, which means it would be 1.8 feet from the side property line and 2.5 feet from the front property line along Hancock Street. This addition then would, um, would require two variances to be considered for those encroachments into the setback. The second addition is for an enclosed sunroom to the back of that structure, and it would be for a total of 196 square feet. Um, also, this would be generally in alignment with the existing structure, which means it would be 1.8 feet from the side property line and it's brought in a little bit from the structure, it would end up being 3.9 feet from the front property line fronting along Hancock Street. Um, the applicant is also proposing to have two on-site parking stalls, and that would be constructed behind the sunroom addition. The property zoned RS4, which is single family residential, 4,000 square feet, um, lot size, which is our smallest zoning district that we have. It's also located in the City Core Overlay District. And the City Core Overlay District recognizes that um, the City Core has uh, many homes that are historical and, and were constructed uh, much prior before we had a zoning ordinance. And it makes accommodations to allow um, deviations from that. One of those is for the front setback. It allows for the structure to be placed in alignment with the adjoining houses or 10 feet, whichever is greater. So in this case, the house is significantly less than the 10 foot. Um, so it would, that's why they're asking for a variance for that front setback. It doesn't even meet that, that 10 foot level. Um, and the side property lines are five feet and the rear is 20. For variances, uh, the applicant does need to attest that it meets those standards, which the applicant has submitted that information, that there are practical difficulties, obviously, for developing, um, and the hardship is due to the narrow width and the extremely small size of the lot. Uh, the property is unique that the size and narrow shape is smaller and more narrow than other par properties within that subdivision. Um, from an aerial view, you can see that it is smaller than some of the other properties nearby. The applicant states that the property was subdivided several decades ago and was not self-created or deliberate by the owner. So based upon these reasons, um, the staff believes that it does meet the findings for a variance, and uh, this application would require four separate motions and um, actions by the board, um, whichever way you wish to, to vote. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions from the board. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for staff at this point? First question. <clears throat> okay, seeing that the residents at 702 East Vine calling the front property line Hancock and Sun Porch is to be at the rear of the residence. So is it in, is it going beyond what is not actually the front property line of Hancock, but in East Vine, the front property line? That's a great question. The City of Murfreesboro zoning ordinance requires that um, for corner lots or any, any lots that have street frontage, um, that those be treated the same as a front setback. So Hancock and Vine would be Correct. considered Correct, so both Hancock Street and East Vine Street are their frontages. So it's actually, the sun porch would be on the side That would be Hancock. 
Right. Correct. Running behind the house. Right. So they would, in essence, have two side property lines and two front property lines. So the side, I guess, where the porch is going to be added is going to be encroaching on the back property line? The of, uh, of, or back or side, depending upon your perspective. You're looking from East Vine, mm -hmm. they're building it to the back, but since the property is also front and Hancock, it's the side uh, setback that's in uh, non-compliance as proposed? Right, it's the side yard setback that's between this house and the adjoining property. So it's the property line along the eastern edge of the property. And, yes, and so the requirement is it should be five feet? It should be five feet. And it's currently, uh, the structure is currently at 1.8 feet. From the, the side setback, not the front setback. From the side, correct. Okay. But the fact of the matter is, is it's other than going uh, whatever direction in the rear of the structure, it's not, go it's not encroaching any further on uh, Hancock or Vine, correct? Hancock, in the current building. Not Vine Street. So it, Hancock Street and Vine Street are both uh, frontage. Right, I get that. So it's but encroaching into the front setback along the Hancock side street. But the footprint of the house remains the same, except that it will be extended on the rear. Correct. Yeah. Or the side, depending on how you look at it. Yeah. Well, if Hancock. The front of the house. If the front how of the is house is on Vine. How much is going to encroach off of Hancock with the new addition? any more or any less I mean it's coming the same width squaring with the side of the house mm -hmm. facing Hancock so it's really the setback going into the backyard right face it. so it would be because it's going to be constructed basically in that for the second story it's going to be in that same footprint right so it's not extending further than what the existing house already is but because it is an addition and it's follow that same alignment the variance is still would still be required because you're still having that encroachment of that new second story and then the first story the enclosed sun porch is a little bit less of an encroachment because it's 3.9 feet from Hancock rather than 2.5 feet. Is that so, why the porch got its own two items on the agenda? Because it's a little different? It's a little different, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it, it, if you look at the, um, the site plan that was included in the packet, you'll see that there's a, the footprint goes a little bit in. Mm -hmm. um, the applicant is also here to answer any questions. He may be able to explain why he's doing this project. It is a um, restoration and renovation of the existing structure so rather than tearing down and starting over wanted to to try and keep it and and make it usable but there's no there's no encroachment on the south side of this property correct because there'll still be room it looks like for a parking uh, spot you are correct okay any further questions for staff yes sir uh, mr hopkins anything you'd like to add Thank you very much. Um, my wife and I live at 702 East Main, so this little storehouse is directly behind us. And uh, uh, we did a very large renovation project on our home. And so we get to look at this little house and the one across the street every day. Uh, and uh, so we, we had the uh, opportunity a few months ago to buy both the little storehouse and the one across the street. Um, we have acquired several properties in Murfreesboro and done renovations and, and they're in our rental portfolio. Um, and this is what we have in mind for the little storehouse. Um, we have researched the chain of title. Uh, we've gone to the Rutherford County Archives to try to find the original owner. And so uh, you will see on the rendering the name that we would put in a concrete plaque on the front to designate the original owner. Uh, we'll also put a new facade on the building and, and make it really better than new. Um, 
and so these additions both upstairs and to the rear just make the house far more livable uh, it's been a one-bedroom apartment in recent years and it's in very very bad condition um, and then I'll just speak just briefly to the house on the right it was uh, in such bad condition that our architect advised us to put it in the dumpster and we did do that and we're going to build something very very nice uh, there and to my knowledge I think everything's going to be within the current setbacks for new construction so um, uh, unless there's something that comes up I don't think that we're going to need uh, any variances on that um, our street Hancock goes all the way back to Mercury and so these two houses will flank uh, Hancock and will really be the entryway into that uh, inner city community and, and hopefully um, it will spur some added development in that neighborhood uh, and it's something I think we'll be very proud of thank you uh, any further questions for mr. what are your plans for the property I beg your pardon what's your plans for the property once the, it's the complete? plan for, for this little house mm -hmm. uh, to start construction immediately on no, that. I mean what and, the and use of it and you're gonna rent, rent it out to rent it and to put it in a rental portfolio okay yeah any other questions thank you sir at this time we'll conduct a public hearing uh, is there anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application seeing none we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussion or a motion and again we've got four components to this I'll start it off I I, I think this is going to be by the looks of this uh, a, a definite improvement and I hope like Mr. Hopkins says this is a, a spur of other redevelopment so that being said I will make a motion that we approve the variance of the th th three feet uh, from the required five feet side setback for a second story addition second all right we have a motion and a second for the first portion any further discussion if not all in favor say aye aye, aye. any opposed no, so there are none, so that part has passed. Next, the seven foot variance from the 10 foot front setback. Make a motion that we approve that also. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. If there's no further discussion, <laughs> unless unless Mr. Go, Halliburton go wants right to take in. them all, no, uh -uh. I'll um, move to approve the three foot variance um, from the required five foot setback for a seven foot porch. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That part is passed. Uh, and I'll I'll also move to approve the six foot. Uh, variance from the required 10 foot front setback for a sun porch. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Not all of them ever say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. That application's been approved. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, next, we'll move to application Z17049 by Frank Purvis requesting a 10 foot variance from the zoning ordinance which requires a 10 foot side setback. Uh, this is in, in order to construct an attached carport eight inches from the property line. The property is in an RS RS-12 zone located at 2059 Alexander Boulevard. Uh, Ms. Rush, if you'd review that for us. Yes, thank you. Uh, the applicant, Mr. Purvis, wishes a variance of 10 feet from Appendix A Chart 2 of the City of Murfreesboro zoning ordinance in order to construct an attached carport no closer than eight inches from the side property line. Um, the side property line setback is 10 feet and the request for the variance would be 10 feet as we do round up in our practice. The subject property um, has an existing two-story residence and an attached three-car garage. The three-car garage measures 30 feet width by 20 feet depth approximately and the lot size is approximately 13,758 square feet in size. The proposed carport measures 25 feet in length by 13 feet in width. Mr. Purvis attests that the unique circumstances uh, that he's requesting the variance for 
um, that's unusual is that the driveway is narrow where the garage doors um, in, the, in the front meet and it comes in at an extreme angle of the driveway which limits his ability for parking in the garage. Um, and if the variance was granted, it would not be detrimental to other properties since it would not impede or cause difficulty to any of the neighbors. Uh, he also states that this was not of his own making as it was part of the original construction of the house. The zoning ordinance requires for the setbacks in the zoning district to have 10 feet on the side, 25 in the rear, and 35 feet in the front. Um, I just wanted to make note that uh, from studying of the aerials, the property size and shape is pretty consistent with other properties in that neighborhood, that there really isn't anything unusual in comparison to the others. Uh, you can see from the aerial that the driveway does come in at an angle. The neighbor to the east adjoining his property also has an angled driveway, but not quite the same um, extent as Mr. Purvis's and he does have to pull in and uh, to access the three-car garage. Uh, if he was to back out, it would be that area where he's proposing the, the carport um, if he's backing out of the cars from the garage now. So we would probably have to come up with some other configuration, maybe backing out to the street if he was to pull out. Um, The photograph on the on the monitor does show the angle of the driveway um, and the location where the carport would be located, as well as the the carport design. I have no further information on this project, but I feel free to answer any questions and I believe the applicant is here as well and can respond to any questions about the project. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for staff at this point? Ms. Rush, help me understand uh, number three about not self-created. Um, Ask that again, please. I'm trying to understand when you make a statement about it being not self-created, when an applicant is by its own application creating it mm -hmm. to add a carport, number one. Maybe that's not germane to self-creation. I mean, it looks like, you know, you already have an attached three-car garage in this particular type of development. That's pretty typical, standard. And the person that is applying, making an application for this variance, uh, obviously bought that home, probably saw that. So I'm, I'm trying to, I guess, trying to get my hands around how is it not self-created? that they're wanting to build a carport that doesn't exist? That's a good question. I think it's um, kind of a legal question, so I'd like to defer to our, our attorney. I, I guess my, uh, the, the applicant is asserting that he didn't, as I would, I would take this and understand it, he didn't design the lot originally. Yes, he bought it, and bought it, of course, existed the way it currently does, uh, but that the the physical character of the lot, the driveways, the angle of the driveway, all of that shape was created by other people. And yes, he bought it, but he's not the one who designed it that way. But he so bought it. He bought it, and I guess and he realizes the. the paraphrase, he's now. So why, why does I guess, how does a, an attached carport going to help that problem? Uh, but the applicant may speak to that. I, I'm not. I'm not I don't. All I see is what he's applying for. I'm not sure why. Okay. Why the why is and hows? I'm, all right. I don't know Thank that we you. know. Thank you very much. Um, actually, uh, the third there's three car garage in the uh, the one that's closest and the tightest to the turn uh, is actually shorter on the inside. There's some entryway steps that come down, so you really can't physically park a car in that section. Uh, what I was looking for originally was variants to build a carport, and after speaking to um, the HOA members and, and so forth uh, decided to, if uh, approved, change that from a carport to uh, a, a, an attached garage. Uh, certain vehicles, I cannot get into those other two open garages. There's three of them. One of them you can't get into because it's so tied up against that uh, brick wall and those steps happen to come down out of that. So uh, from an ease of parking a, a larger vehicle, a pickup truck or something like that, it'd be a lot easier to just pull it straight into there. 
So are you saying that you uh, wish to change your application to become a covered uh, parking, like a, another parking garage or in not a carport? I would have to do that. I'd tell you that in truth because after speaking to some of the other folks um, in the neighborhood, I decided that in order to keep the quality of, of the look around there that um, we would, instead of doing the carport, it would have a, the same outline in the same footprint it would be upgraded and have brick and match the home instead of an open two open sides is that wouldn't it be appropriate our um our hearing today uh i believe that this would require a reapplication uh and i can't at this point speak to the issue of whether that requires a new application fee or if you could modify this current application and come back under the current application come back next month with the uh or whenever you're ready to uh, with the additional figures and additional data because uh, we as I'm sure you guys know we received several comments from neighbors uh, and I'm not sure if any of them are able to be here today or not but we have received those comments that are and they may change uh, there may be more comments mm -hmm. the neighborhood may not have any objections and uh, while that you know it's not a popularity vote but right. the concerns of the neighbors we Absolutely. listen to take that into effect and, if, yeah, and they're listened to by the board so uh i think we should uh have you withdraw this and resubmit it okay. uh, uh and, and it sounds like you have listened to your neighbors and that's probably yeah, a so good thing yes i, I mean the variance was really good that, but i understand where you're coming from and i think there would be uh based on the folks i've already spoken to there would be uh, no problem with that they yeah, it, it may change in the neighborhood it, yeah it may change that a lot and of course it may not but we'll find out but since it is so different it would be good if we have a resubmit the application okay that'd be great um, let's do that with marina okay. yeah you would just need to um confirm that you're officially withdrawing the application okay. and and then we would have i'll be in touch with how to start over that'd be fine could i ask a question mm -hmm. uh as proposed this basically is eliminating any setback if, if he builds a con the garage in the same footprint it's going to be eight inches from the property line correct correct so i guess mr purse have you consulted with that neighbor about their particular challenges or issues with that the nearest that neighbor close that would to be the property line not no sir okay and i guess the question if, if you don't think that, it, I guess you have to go through the process, but if, you, if, if, if it doesn't look like that close of a variance would be granted, um, then I won't submit, resubmit. It's just, it's just like whether I need to do it or not. You know what I'm saying? If, it's the, if, if, if you don't think that it's close, if it's too close and you don't think it would grant again, I won't go through the application process. That was really the, the focus of the I, I variance. Think, I think that our, the, position that we're in at this point is that there's been notice given of a carport mm -hmm. um carports are, di are obviously different than an okay. attached garage um if there are any subtle sub, sub subtle differences mm -hmm. in the ordinance that we we may need to look at that differently and in order to proceed today it even though the setbacks may be the same there may be other things that we need gotcha. to look at differently. Okay. And not only have we not been looked at that yet, also your neighbors who get those notices have not been able to have the opportunity to think about it in that way. And so it's hard for us to say at this juncture the specifics of what differences that might be. Okay. And it's so inconvenient. I'll, I'll yeah, yeah, no worries. I can withdraw it and uh, reapply with Marina, no worries. It, one of the... Uh, issues for us to look at is light and air to the to the neighbors mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a full structure you know it's hard to say for sure what it would look like when it comes in but it certainly at least for me is uh is something I'm looking at pretty close so as you consider where to do it certainly we'll look at the whole the whole thing for you and, and see if it makes sense but uh, that sort of i have another question of our planner uh given that the you know we're talking about well over thirteen thousand square foot of area living here of uh, um, land area uh relative to the size of the improvements that are there now is there any any ratios that this detached garage or it may have been planned to be attached uh any ratios of open space that that's going to exceed by having that extra improvement there the ordinance allows up to 25 percent lot coverage 
and this is right at 24.999 percent that's what i was it's that's what i was really close surmising there's going to be on, I, I see i can see lots of concerns as it's So his request for a formal draw is enough, or is it a, like a motion to defer that we need? I think uh, it's enough. A motion to defer would be, at the applicant's request, would be appropriate. No, I think we, it's a withdrawal. Okay. Otherwise, the clock keeps ticking. Uh, so you, it's a withdrawal. Just let Otherwise, it be a withdrawal, not deferred. Just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah. You're okay with that, Mr. Burns? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For understanding. Thank you. Okay, that application has been deferred. Um, next, we'll move to uh, special use permits. Our first one is application Z17050 by Rebecca Marshall, requesting a special use permit to allow a home-based business sewing and alterations. Uh, this is for property located in a single-family RS15 district located at 303 Brewster Court. Uh, if you would view that for us. Thank you. Um, our applicant, Ms. Marshall, wishes to conduct a home occupation at a residence uh, for clothing alterations and she lives at 303 Brewster Lane, which is located in the Brent Mead subdivision. Uh, the applicant's letter indicated um, how she would operate the business. She's been doing this, I guess, in the past in another residence and uh, recently moved and would like to, to continue on with her business here. Uh, she primarily does bridal and formal wear and she usually has about five customers in total per week. Uh, and they would come during the weekdays, Monday through Friday, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. She does have occasional Saturday mornings where they come to do their pickups of the clothing. And she states that uh, due to the nature of her business that she only has one customer at a time that comes for the fitting for the, at the residence. There is sufficient parking in her driveway on site. There are no employees and the volume of work is so small um, and she is able to do this while she cares for her infant son and that's why she's not able to go to uh, the customer's sites and that's why they would come to her site. Uh, there would not be any signage involved and does not anticipate any increased traffic from this home business. Um, there are findings that are included in the staff report for use permit indicating that it would not impede um, you know, health, safety, welfare of the neighborhood, would not increase traffic. Um, and staff feels that it is consistent with those findings. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer, and the applicant is here this afternoon as well. Thank you. Any questions for staff? I always get a little confused on these home-based businesses, so just remind me, when we, um, if we were to approve this business, or this application, I should say, um, it goes with the owner, correct? Not, it doesn't transfer to the next party in question? Uh, it would go with the owner because it is uh, business license based. So any future owner would have to apply for a business license and they would not be able to use the same. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Any further questions for staff? Uh, anything the applicant would like to add? If you'd like to come forward and give us any comments. Good afternoon. I'm Rebecca Marshall. Um, I had a business years ago. It was a little miscommunication on what I did. I, I did have a business out in town, Becky's Alterations, for years. And I closed it due to taking care of my mother. Uh, and she passed away in uh, December of this past year. Um, so with that being said, I am a seamstress, that's what I do. Um, I have a grandson now and I take care of him and I would like to be able to continue my business as far as being able to do my alterations but still be able to stay home. Uh, and as she said, I'm not able to take my grandson around town and meet with my customers. Um, I'm not planning to move out in town any longer. I would like to just stay home and, and do my business. And since I do specialize in bridal wear, it's not like I have a heavy traffic coming back and forth. Um, so basically, I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, thank you. Any, any questions for Ms. Marshall? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, at this time, we'll conduct a public hearing. If there's anyone present wishing to speak for or against this application, if you'd come forward and 
State your name and address and give us any comments you may have. Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for further discussion or a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move for approval of the uh, special use permit as uh, requested. Second. And that's subject to the staff comments. Yes. Do we have limitations on time in the recommended conditions? 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. was her. And those would be included in the motion? Yes, what we do is we'll, we put conditions on their business license form okay. that would match what she's described it so and she in would. Her application. In her application, right. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. That application has been approved. Uh, next, we'll move to application Z17051 by Jeff Hooper um, of Barge, Cawthorn and Associates on behalf of Rutherford County Board of Education and Oakland Middle School. They're requesting a special use permit to allow expansion of an institutional group assembly use, uh, in this case, the school. Uh, the proposed expansion includes the following, a building annex of 60,647 square feet for classrooms and gymnasium, a building addition of 9,103 square feet for a dining area, uh, a concession stand of 2,544 square feet and five parking stalls, um, athletic practice fields for football and soccer, parking lot on the east side of Cushing Avenue, and last, a new parking lot on the north side of the school building. Uh, this is for property in an RS-15 zone located 853 DeJarnett Lane and the vacant lot on the east side of Cushing Avenue. If you would review that for us, Ms. Rush. Thank you. Um, as you said, the Rutherford County uh, Board of Education wishes to construct additional school space at the Oakland Middle School over on um, 853 DeJarnett and the corner of Cushing. Um, this project is very much needed. There are several modular buildings currently used, utilized on the property for education purposes and classroom space. Uh, this addition and annex and um, will replace those and provide uh, the classroom space for, uh, for the students at, at Oakland Middle. The building annex is a two-story building. Uh, it's 60,000, I'm sorry, 60,000. 647 square feet in size. It's for the classrooms. It will also include computer labs and a gym and some office space. And it's going to be located where the existing parking lot is on the north side of the building. The building addition is actually going to be uh, constructed directly onto the existing building. And it's to expand the dining area that's there currently. Um, as you indicated, uh, in order to do this addition and annex, uh, the school will have to relocate the athletic fields to their property opposite of Cushing on the other side of the um, Cushing Avenue and that would be for the soccer and the football fields. They're also proposing to have a concession stand uh, on the side of the property back by the softball and baseball fields which will also provide restrooms, uh, much needed restrooms for these practice fields. Um, there will also be some parking associated with the relocated football and soccer, um, uh, 35 new stalls on the Cushing Avenue side. Construction will start around uh, the end of this calendar year or by January and should last approximately 9 to 12 months. Um, additional landscaping will be provided where required by code and where it's focused will be on the building and the parking area. Stormwater runoff will be directed toward the existing storm basin that's located across from Cushing um, to address any of the stormwater issues. The applicant has, uh, has put together a PowerPoint presentation to help uh, show and, and convey the different parts of this application because there are several pieces to it. Um, so if you have any questions, I'm happy to help. Otherwise, the applicant is here. Any questions for staff at this point? I have one. Um, I think the Planning Commission saw a development project that would, that'll have an interest on Cushing. Uh, it's act, uh, do we know if the, is this, this uh, street that's, that's hitting, or uh, alley, whatever it is, uh, uh, access, 
to Cushing that is above, I'm looking at uh, C20, C20, and it's between the proposed annex part C and the proposed annex parts A and B. I'm just curious if that road lines up with the plan uh, residential development that is already on the books. Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, and I think the, it's the other road? Come up to the microphone, please. Is all of this in the city or is some of this being annexed? Uh, the the property is uh, undergoing annexation right now. All of it or part of it? Uh, the that part that's, that's east of uh, Cushing. The part that's uh, east of Cushing, correct? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, so you're saying that there was an application? It's already been approved. For, for the Elmo? The yes. And that would all go all the way and to New Las Casas. Right? It is now. We're talking on this yeah. side. Okay. This, right here. But they said. The yes. Saying. That property. Yeah, yes. That's, that's getting developed. It's. It it is a second phase of a development. Yes. It, correct. No yeah. more donkeys. <laughs> I I live in an adjoining neighborhood. So yeah. yeah. You got a problem with donkeys? <laughs> no, there's donkeys that are in that, that lot right now. There's two little donkeys at the end of that road in Cushing. And we'll have to navigate to find them. Yeah. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't know who they, who they belong to. I just see the donkeys from time to time. Not where these fields are, that corner lot. And I may, have, I may be wrong. It may be further back, but they'll be able to tell us. Because the frontage of this development is on Las Casas that I'm speaking of. Oh no, there's a property back. That is behind on the other side of the creek. Good. Okay. If it's is it currently in development? Could be. There, it's on the other side of the creek. Okay, but the, I it don't know if it goes that far but into it, it, Jarnet. But it eventually hits Cushing. Yes, it does. Yeah. It does. And it's actually shown on our plans where the parking lot for the athletic field. Oh, that street. That's the road, and the staff asked. I see it. I see it now. I see that's, what you're doing. That's the proposed road for the development that you're. Speaking Which lines up with your new parking lot too. Yes, sir. I just want to make sure it lined up. We, that's where we got that alignment. Okay. Can I? Can I get everybody? Can we get everybody's name so we can get the minutes <laughs> squared away? I'm getting a blank stare. <laughs> Do something. I'm Charlie Lee with the Rutherford County Board of Education. Okay. Construction project manager. I'm sorry. That's okay. This is Joseph Binkley with Binkley Garcia. He's the architect. Okay. And I'm remiss. Yeah, Jeff afternoon. Hooper is not here today. I'm not Jeff Hooper. I'm Susie <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> with large he wasn't able to come. All right. Okay. Jeff decided to go to the beach today. So. <laughs> Rough. Just use this button. Yeah, the right arrow. Yeah. Can I ask? I don't know if this is appropriate, but all right, given that planning, is, the, is there any concerns about the width of the street design since there's a residential development or, the, or maybe the parking lot entrance? Is that? Yeah, I can't. With it or? I, I haven't, uh, I don't recall the, um, you know, the number of houses and all, so I, I can't really answer that. Pushing, or are they when we about? developed the original Oakland Middle School, the city had anticipated some growth and they asked us to develop that road at three lanes. So it has two lanes with the center turning. Okay. Cushing does. No, Cushing, yes. I, I, was, I guess um, what I'm talking about is with the design of the driveway going into this parking lot. Is it just going to be designed as a parking lot entrance or is that, and, and the street's going to run? We actually have two with that. Are you referring to the, the, the drive athletic, that leads to that? As you're coming in on, yeah, turning north turning on Cawthorn, you north take on right. Cushing and turning right, or heading east off of Cushing. We, we just showed that road and put it, the staff yeah. had originally asked us to show a connection there so that people coming from the development would not have to turn on to Cushing to turn in if they were parents 
going to the parking lot that when we go through the process with the planning department if they determine that it's too close we're open to not having it we, it was we, we sh show it on our drawings at the recommendation of that there would be a road there we're, we're open to take it out leave it in it's, it's whatever the staff asks us to do but we do show it at this time based on their request okay you have the you have a no. presentation. You guys got your presentation? Would you like me to go ahead? This was sure. a presentation that we did um, at a neighborhood meeting last week, and Marina had just asked if we would share it with you. A lot of it is the same information she's just, just discussed, but, um, but it just gives a little more detail about what's there existing-wise. This shows Oakland Middle School here, DeJarn on the bottom, and Cushing Avenue. And this is the parking lot right now where the um, one of the proposed two-story buildings is going to be going. So the current middle school is about 162,000 square feet. It's one story. It uh, serves the grades six through eight. It is at capacity and they are currently using portables. There's about 1,100 students there right now. This addition um, would be enough space so that they would not have to use the portables in the future. Uh, this shows the existing athletic facilities that's to the north of the middle school. They currently have a softball, baseball, soccer, and football fields. This is turn just for your reference. Um, Cushing is this road right here. But um, there's several components to this. This building here, I don't know if you, can you see my mouse? That's the uh, dining addition. This is the two-story educational annex, and this shows the additional parking. On this side of Cushing are the relocated sports fields along with some parking for those. The dining addition is attached to the existing middle school on the north side. It's about 9,000 square feet, and it houses um, additional dining space as well as a serving line, some bathrooms, and some storage space. It connects with the educational annex building through a uh, canopy across the school's drive. The educational annex is about 60,000 square feet. It's a two-story structure with 18 classrooms four science labs, a gymnasium, and administrative offices. Let me go back to this one. This parking lot, um, it accounts for the lost spaces in the lot where the educational annex is going to be constructed in addition to adding spaces for the extra classroom space. So this shows the concession stand and restroom facilities. Um, it's a fairly small building, single story, 2,500 square feet. And because uh, of the additions, they're losing the, the fields on this side, so they were relocated to the other side of Cushing along with some parking to serve those. Um, and Joseph Binkley will discuss the floor plans and the elevations. Afternoon, Joseph Binkley, Binkley Garcia Architecture. And I'll just briefly uh, point out the plans to familiarize you with what, what is planned here. Um, as Suzanne mentioned, the, um, get the mouse over the dining addition. This is uh, primarily to accommodate the students that will be in this new annex. This dining addition uh, backs up to the existing kitchen, so their cooking will take place in the same uh, kitchen that it does now and will feed in this dining room so students will come uh, through the covered connector across the drive to uh, the dining from the uh, classroom addition uh, you'll see the first floor plan of the annex building and this building has uh, its own administrative offices the drop-off will be in a covered point at the middle of the building on that north side where that loop drive and and parking is offices at that point you'll see the gymnasium there off to the right and then um, there are 24 total classrooms uh, 12 down and 12 up this shows the second floor with the classrooms those include four science labs 
uh, to uh, computer labs and then regular classrooms as part of that building as well. This would give you just an idea. The intent here is to uh, make just a seamless addition to the existing building. We're able to match the existing brick, uh, roof materials, windows, and the patterning of, of those. And so we plan to carry that around into this new addition as well so that it looks like it's been there uh, the whole time with the original. So be glad to answer any additional questions you may have. I don't have any architectural questions. I do have, uh, this is a sign of my age, I haven't been to a middle school football game or a middle school soccer game in several years. What, any thought process of, so you've got, I, don't, I didn't count the number of spaces, but this parking lot that is adjacent to these proposed fields, are, are we gonna have people walking across Cushing uh, once they park to go to these games and if we are are we going to have a designated walkway I was uh, thinking the same thing because they're labeled as practice I thought they were labeled as practice fields but I, c I can't tell I couldn't tell whether in, in, in where, Rutherford where County play. School I can answer that Rutherford County Schools they don't play their practice fields they, the football actually plays on the high school fields the middle school does yes all the, middle schools play on the high schools they're practice only so it does not mean that they won't potentially could have a scrimmage game of some right. kind. But typically they play all their regular season games on the high school field. Is that true of soccer also? Pretty much. Okay. I had a question about, I don't think this was where you're going, but the concession stand is dislocated from everything else. That, and the, the, the actual intent, we're calling it a concession stand, which it does middle school because they don't have typically don't have games. Now the baseball and softball do they because they play during the day right after school. They don't cook. It's not like a high school environment. So basically what they would be able to sell would typically, you would see them with a cooler and they're selling water and drinks out of a cooler and M&Ms and things like that. The more, more major intent is because of the distance from the school is the restrooms for the kids uh, is more the intent it's not like a high school going to Oakland where we got the grills growing and all that kind of, it, it's not that kind of an environment. I understand that. I would just, just looking at the site plan, yeah, it it's, like to it, me, it's more for the proximity. It would be more, make more sense to have had it across the street where the soccer and football fields, not knowing. If I have it on, it's, I'm kind of danged if we do and danged yeah. if we don't. If I put it on one side, I'm, right. it's the other one gets their feelings hurt. The other thing is with the sewer, that we would need to tie into. We couldn't get into the sewer from the, the other side of the street, so we needed to be on the west side. Right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Sewer. Sure. So with no games on these fields, the practice there's no lighting involved? No, sir, we don't. No, sir. No lighting at all. Okay. That, that way at dark, it's over. For better or worse. And that's, is that true of the baseball and softball fields too? Yes, sir. Really? Yes, sir. In middle school, they have no lights. You got more daylight anyways. Yeah, spring. true. When they have their tournaments, they end up playing on the high school fields and they work out an agreement with yeah. them on splitting the gates. But okay. All their ga any games they would have potentially would be in the afternoon. All right. It can get busy right there for baseball, but I, I've, I've, that's the only thing I've ever seen the, there the is good, baseball. I guess if there is a good thing that with the additional parking that we're providing. It could be better for the baseball field. Because the, the parking lot that's there now is used, but there's two large drainage ditches that you have to cross over a bridge to get to the ball fields, and it's a long ways from the baseball fields. So we do, we have had issues with the people parking on the sides of the street. So by, I'm going to use the term being forced with this addition to move the football and softball across the street, it gets those parking lot, that this new parking lot much closer to baseball and softball, so we feel they're going to be utilized and will help with the parents parking on the side of the street. Thank you, guys. Any further questions? Thank you very much. seen a public hearing is there anyone present <laughs> wishing to speak for or against this application <laughs> I think we've heard from everybody in attendance um, 
Seeing none, we'll declare the public hearing closed and open the floor for any further discussion or motions on our five-part application. If no discussion, I'll, Tim, do you have? How is, is this one motion or has to be five motions? Typically when I see the big dots, I assume that's separate motions. I thought it was just one. I, I think in a special use permit of this nature, I think one motion will cover it. Okay. I'll make, things. I'll make a motion that we approve um, this application subject to all staff comments. Second. Have a motion and a second. Are there any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That application has been approved. Uh, next item, staff reports and other business. Uh, there are none. I have nothing. There are none. All right, then we will adjourn.